Today, we're gonna see if you can still play games, edit videos, and even host a game server with a cheap $300 mini PC from 2021. This is my strongest mini PC, and I got it mainly for Moonlight Game Streaming, as it was the cheapest way to get 4K 120Hz on my OLED TV. Although, this mini PC surprised me with its performance and productivity tests like Cinebench, 3 d Mark, and DaVinci Resolve. There are lots of other stronger mini PCs on the market, but for the great price, I think the B-Link Sur 5 is one of the best choices right now. I even have the older model with the 5800H, but this newer one looks even better. Mini PCs are getting cheaper every year though, and I think there's lots of options on the market that would suit everybody's needs. For specs, we're rocking a Ryzen 7 5800H with Vega 8 integrated graphics, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, and a 1TB NVMe SSD. So before we get into productivity and game streaming, let's start off with the gaming benchmarks. The Counter-Strike 2 results turned out pretty well with a solid 72.3 FPS average with medium settings. I don't play this game normally, but I do play a lot of FPS, and preferably I would like to have more frames with the lowest settings, but if you only have a 60Hz monitor, then medium seems pretty safe here. PUBG turned out a lot better than when I tested it with my Iris XE graphics laptop. With this Ryzen mini PC, we got a solid 57.9 FPS average with very low graphics and an 80% render resolution. I'll be honest, it was kind of hard to see people, but I would definitely say it's playable and can be fine-tuned even more. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege and it played pretty well too. In the in-game benchmark it shows we got 88 FPS, but after testing in-game we got an average of 78.7 FPS with low settings. I guess the benchmark was either optimistic or the gameplay was more intensive than normal, but either way this performs well for a budget mini PC. Risk of Rain 2 performed great with low settings and textures set at 1 8th. After a 30 minute run we got an average of 61.8 FPS with 1% lows at 48.8. This resulted in a much smoother experience than I expected, and again it showed the power of this cheap mini PC compared to Iris XE graphics. Delta Force doesn't care if you have a GPU or not, because here at low settings with FSR Ultra Performance, we got an average of 70 FPS, with 1% lows around 40. This was in the Warfare mode too, so I imagine the Extraction game mode with less players will perform even better than this. I'm surprised it even boot up, but this was one of the best performing shooter games I tried. The Finals is my favorite game, so I had to test it out. With low settings and FSR Ultra Performance, we got an average of 42.2 FPS with 1% lows at 32.9. Honestly, again, it's better than I thought, but I perform pretty bad with this kind of FPS. But I did win my first game with it, so it's not totally unplayable. Continuing that thought, Elden Ring is also not totally unplayable but we did have to drop it to 720p low to get some good FPS. On average, we got 50.4 with 1% lows at 32.6. Better than expected for such a large open world game though, so I'm impressed. The latest Call of Duty Black Ops 6 didn't turn out too well with this mini PC. Here with the minimum preset and FSR Ultra Performance, we got 36.8 FPS average with 1% lows at 26.1. I still managed to get top of the leaderboard somehow, but in the graph coming up, you'll see other Call of Duty games like Modern Warfare 2019 that perform much better than this one. So can the 5800H still deliver adequate performance for gamers? Oh yeah, this PC offers good performance in esports titles like Counter-Strike 2 and PUBG, and still offers respectable performance in more demanding single-player games like Elden Ring. All these games were tested with no overclock and AMD Adrenaline settings set to default, so you can expect similar results with the 5800H B-Link Sur 5, or better with their latest iteration including a 6800U. But besides gaming, what else could you use this mini PC for? To start the productivity tests, with Cinebench we score a 668 in its CPU multi-core stress test. This puts it close to a desktop Ryzen 5800X chip, which was actually stronger than my CPU until a couple months ago. With DaVinci Resolve, I set up a test file with 15 minutes of 4K clips recorded with AV1 at 31 megabits per second. The B-Link Mini PC finished rendering in 1 hour and 7 minutes, while my $3000 plus gaming desktop with a 9800X 3D and 7900XT finished in 4 minutes and 51 seconds. 
PCMark 10 is a benchmarking software that offers a comprehensive set of tests for overall performance of a PC. It simulates everyday scenarios like rendering, app startup times, photo editing, video conferencing, web browsing, and a couple other things. Our mini PC scored over 5900, which is a strong result for such a small, power efficient PC. 3DMark also helps us test the performance further with its night raid test designed for integrated graphics. I expected FPS in the one digits for this test just because how graphically intensive it looked, but it was actually pretty nice to watch. The B-Link Sur 5 scored over 17,000 which is on par with Intel i7 CPUs designed for laptops in 2023. And here are the results for the CPU profile test which showed performance about as expected. With Moonlight, I'm able to harness the power of my gaming rig on any device I want. This B-Link mini PC is a good choice for me because I can use a DisplayPort to HDMI 2.1 cable, which allows me to get 4K 120Hz game streaming. A cheaper $200 mini PC wouldn't be able to do this because its older version of HDMI would only allow for 4K 60Hz. So instead of playing the finals at 40fps, I'm able to play it at over 120fps with very low latency as you can see on screen. Oh, and ignore my bad gameplay. If you want to see something better, go check out my dedicated gaming channel. I would recommend using an ethernet cable when streaming with Moonlight, but this mini PC also has Wi-Fi 6, which is what I use throughout my testing. I've recently gotten into servers and home labs, so I wanted to see how this mini PC would perform as a game server. What better game to test than Minecraft? Here I downloaded the latest version of the server executable from Minecraft's website, gave the server 4 gigs of RAM, and launched it. 4 gigabytes is plenty for a vanilla server with over 10 people even, but once you start adding plugins and mods, more RAM could be required. Here though, we could see the mini PC's performance metrics while I join the server from my gaming PC and fly around. The CPU is more than strong enough, but we could see I could manage my RAM a little bit better. Maybe close some programs or something. But even now, there's space to allocate more if I need to. And honestly, I ran game servers on much weaker computers. The advantage here is that you could run the server while doing lots of other things too. Of course, this takes a bit to set up safely and you gotta leave the PC on 24-7, but it's a fun endeavor in my opinion. For something more plug and play, I've been a customer with GG servers since 2017. I use them because they have a super affordable price and great features and support like one-click mod pack installs for the server. They also support a ton of other games, so please use my link below if you've been considering hosting any kind of game server. So can a mini PC like the B-Link Sur 5 Pro hold up in 2025? Well, it won't replace your gaming rig or MacBook Pro, but for 300 USD, this little computer is kind of a beast. Light editing, esports gaming, server hosting, 4K 120Hz game streaming, it does way more than I expected. I think this B-Link mini PC is perfect for people who either don't own a PC yet, or for those who want a well-rounded secondary one that can serve many different duties. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and check out the last device I tested here on screen. This lightweight laptop from 2020 actually surprised me.